To understand this task, we need to look at what a partition is. We are not concerned at this time how they are created, but just the basic concepts. Here we shall open a hard drive, which is a very precision instrument, to see the major components. The first item is the actuator arm, that moves about the surface of the platter. At the end of the arm sits a reed right head that literally floats microns above the platter on a cushion of air. The actuator arm is attached to the actuator that consists of magnets that causes the arm to swing over the platter. Then there is the platter, depending upon the size of the hard drive depends on the number of platters that are being used. This hard drive has only one. The platter has a magnetic surface and its properties are changed when an electrical signal is passed through the read right head. The read right head consists of an iron core surrounded by two coils. In the right mode when an electrical current is passed through the coils a magnetic field is produced changing the disc surface properties. In the read mode the coils pick up the different magnetic properties on the disc that is then fed back through the coils. To appreciate the positioning engineering of these components, the reed right head is slightly larger than the thickness of a strand of a human hair. It would be possible just to save the data randomly anywhere on the surface, but there are some important reasons why this is not done, which will be discussed later in the course. Instead the hard drive is mapped out with tracks and sectors. The tracks are concentric circles that are formed on the surface of the hard drive, which are numbered. These tracks are divided into sectors. The number of sectors on a hard drive depends very much on the size of them. As an example, if the hard drive was 320 gigabytes and each sector was 512 kilobytes, then we would expect about 60 million sectors. But if we reduce the size of the sectors down to only 4 kilobytes, then we would expect more. Once again, in our example, it would be about 83.9 million. Remember, the overall size of the drive remains the same, only the size of the sectors have changed. So what difference does it make on what size of these sectors are? So it's to do with data manipulation and the read-write operation. Let's take an example of reading 512 kilobytes from a sector only 4 kilobytes in size. Then the read-write head would have to read 128 sectors. But if the sectors were 512 kilobytes, then only one selector would have to be read, clearly much faster. There is one other point. Each sector can hold only one value. In other words, if the sector is 512 kilobytes and only contains 4 kilobytes of data, then it is considered that that sector is full and the next sector will have to be used. This means that 508 kilobytes of this sector will not be used, clearly a waste of space. To summarise this, if the data that has been manipulated is in large chunks, then it makes sense to have large sectors, since this means less operations. On the other hand, if the data that has been manipulated is only small, then the sector can be reduced in size, thus not waiting sector space. Fortunately, in most cases, this decision is usually made by the operating systems used, although it can be, if required, be finely tuned. When data is saved to the hard drive, the address of the tracks and sectors which store data are held in a table. But before these tracks and sectors are created, an area of the hard drive has to be defined. This is called partitioning. In this example, the whole of the hard drive has been used for one partition and has been allocated a drive letter called C. We could also create two partitions as shown here, in this instance drive C and drive D. We've shown them as two equal parts, but there is nothing really stopping us from making them different sizes as shown in our next example. Now we are using drive C through to drive G or five partitions. We can manipulate these partitions, giving them different sizes. Each one is completely separate from the other. We could also install four operating systems. In our example, we have assigned Windows 7 to C. Windows 8 to Partition D, Vista to 8 and Linux to Drive F. Drive G can be used as a common storage for things. Each operating system needs to be active and the partitions that any hard drive can have is 4. We should be aware that a partition only needs to be active if an operating system is to be installed on it. 
In our example, Drive G is not active as it does not carry an operating system. When a computer boots into the operating system, it must have certain information about the hard drive, such as how many partitions has been created. If there is more than one partition, which one or more of these will be active? If more than one operating system, which one of them will be the default operating system? The final information that is needed is the bootloader, which is a small piece of code that is required to start the operating system. All this information is contained in the master boot record or MBR, and for each hard drive there will only be one MBR. So the master boot record or MBR contains bootloader, the number of partitions and which partition or partitions are active. If the MBR becomes defective through a virus or corrupted in any way, the computer will not be able to boot. This does not mean that the data installed on the hard drive has been lost. The MBR can be rebuilt using the original installation disk or the command MBR. Here we shall look at two examples. The first will be Windows XP. If you wish to follow this task practically, it should be completed on a virtual machine and not on a computer that you do not wish to risk losing data. If you are using the virtual box, then check that the host DVD has been selected. To do this, select which of the virtual machines you will be using. Then click on Settings, click on Storage, then on the CD icon. On the right, click on the disk icon, then click on Host Drive D, which in our example is the CD DVD ROM drive. Check that this has changed to the host drive. Click on OK, then start the virtual machine. Log on if you need to, as in our example. Download the application called Boot X86, which we did earlier, preferably to the desktop as shown here. Because you will need administrative rights to run this program, right click on it, then from the drop down menu click on Run As. You may have to select the following user, then click on the selector to the right of user name. In our example we have chosen Dave since this is the administrator of this computer. And now we enter the password, then click on OK. We are using the program to alter the MBR, nothing more, so we click on Sector Edit. Here you will be viewing the actual MBR of the hard drive. Now we need to change the first 16 bits of data. To do this just type in 0, 0 16 times as shown. Now we need to save this back to the boot sector, so I'll click on Save Changes. Of course we shall not see any changes as yet, since the MBR is only accessed on boot up. Close this option, then exit the program. Click on Start, then choose Turn off the computer, then Restart. Check that the CD DVD drive is empty, then click on Guest. A message similar to the following will appear, Fatal, no bootable medium found, system halted. Close this virtual machine, then insert the original Windows XP CD. Wait for a few seconds for the CD to register. If it auto runs, then close it. Now power the guest up. When the message, press any key to boot from the CD appears, press a key. The installation of Windows XP will begin. At the Setup Modification screen, press Enter to continue. Next press the R key, since we want to repair the XP using the Recovery Console. Here we will find that the console has found Windows on Drive C. Type in 1, then press Enter. You will be prompted to enter a password. Just press the Enter key again. At the C prompt, type in Fix MBR. You will be prompted with a message, Are you sure you want to write a new MBR? Be aware that if you run this on a system that does not have a problem with the MBR, you risk losing all the data on it. In our example, we type in Y, followed by Enter. Type in Exit and the computer should reboot. Do not press a key when the message Press a key to boot from the CD appears. You should have found that Windows has successfully restarted.
After this version of Windows, fixing the MBR was changed. This next example, we shall be using Windows 8. Once again, remove any disks in the CD-ROM drive. I'll like the respective guess, then click on Settings. Select Storage, then highlight Disk. Click on the selected to the right of the CD, DVD, and select Host Drive D, click on OK, then start the guest. Manipulate to the desktop. Once again, we shall be using the same program, so right click on it, then run as administrator. Select Sector Edit and once again enter 16 zeros as before. Save changes, close Sector Edit, then exit. Restart the same guest and once again a similar message as before may appear. Fatal, no bootable medium found, system halted. Power the guest down then insert a copy of Windows 8. If it auto runs then close it. Then start the guest. Click on next to the Windows setup screen. Click on Repair Your Computer. Choose Troubleshoot. Advanced Options. Then Command Prompt. Type in boot rec forward slash fix MBR. Type in exit, then turn off your computer. Restart Windows, but don't press a key when the message appears. Once again, Windows should initialize.